All right, YouTube, we got a good one today. This is for my traders. I got a story time to show you. Go in. Ladies first, Jason. Check this out. The last week we have had, I don't even know, so many different sort of Twitter topics, conversations, different things going on related to the current financial markets. And today I wanna walk you through what's gone on. Of course, we saw SVB, Silicon Valley Bank go under. Um, we had to see a bailout actually happen, unfortunately, for that just in the last week. And what I want to talk about today is the current federal funds rate. The Fed's got a couple options. I want to talk about sort of what's going on, what I'm seeing happen, actually get into the nitty gritty of the details. So first things first, currently this is the federal funds rate chart, okay? Everybody knows this is back in 08. The Fed's had to raise rates. Things were getting too hot. The economy heated up. We all know that. And the same thing happened in COVID. Here's Here's prior to COVID. Right here is when COVID started. They had to jam rates down to all time lows. We'd never seen borrowing money cheaper than ever. And what happened from that point in time, of course, money got cheaper, money got cheaper, more people spent, more people borrowed, and inflation got hot. We'll talk about inflation in just a minute. But then the Fed made a decision to start what's called quantitative tightening. Quantitative tightening is not just about the federal funds rate, but one of the stages of it is the federal funds rate. And they are now raising the rates, the federal funds rate, at the fastest pace in history. The reason this is important to understand is this is putting a lot of stress and pressure, not only on us as Americans and around the globe, but also for the banks. And what I want to talk about today is current rates, which are currently sitting at 5%. But I also want to show you guys right here the current rate of inflation. The current rate of inflation is sitting at 6%. It has started to come down, as you guys can see if I highlight here. That's from the peak of June of 2022, which saw about 9%. We've started to finally see it come down. I use a metaphor like a ship. If I'm to drive an 18-foot ski boat and I'm to turn the wheel, the boat's going to turn immediately. But if I'm the, the captain of, carnival, of a carnival cruise, one of those big boats, and I turn the wheel, the boat's not turning yet. It slowly turns after it. Think about it like that. They started to turn the wheel back in here, but inflation kept going up. Finally, the boat started to turn around, and now, of course, their goal is to get inflation back to the normal spot, you can see here, which is about 2%. Now, here's what's important. They've put a lot of work, they've put a lot of effort into reducing the overall money supply, what I call M2 supply, overall assets, in the United States economy. You understand this. Inflation goes up when there's simply too much money in circulation. We all got too much money and we're blowing money and then things cost more money because we're all able to blow it. Now there's demand for, for goods. We've seen this happen with jewelry. We saw this happen with houses and cars and boats and planes, all sorts of stuff. And so they've done a lot of work to bring inflation back down, AKA money supply back down. But here's the, str the trouble. SVB going under could be the tip of the iceberg of this. Here's why this is important. Think about it like this. The money supply has started to reduce, which caused SVB to go into trouble. Why they were in trouble is beside the point, but think about it in the way of their current um, customers and who their customers were. 97% of their customers were not FDIC insured, meaning 97% of people at that bank were not like you and I. They were um, tech firms, they were startups, they were hedge funds, they were these sort of people with massive bank accounts. 97% of them did not have FDIC insurance because they had more than a quarter million dollars in the bank, meaning that money was as might as well be gone. It was gonna take them years to get back through the process unless there was a bailout. Nobody would bail them out because that's how bad the bank's financials were. The government had to come in and bail out. Think about that for a second. Now, when the government comes in and bails them out, what does that do to money supply? Does that increase money supply? or decrease money supply? Well, of course it increases it. They are coming in and injecting cash to bail out a bank that is now having trouble. And take a look at this. I'm gonna now go over to our money supply chart. Let me zoom in for you guys. Here's peak money supply, about nine trillion right there. It finally started to go down, why? Because the Fed started raising rates, reducing money supply, hence reducing inflation. But last week, what happened? This is special right here. Last week, the bailout, and look what happened. We went from nine 
to 8.34 trillion, and then we went from 8.34 back to 8.64 in the matter of a day. That means that the current level is all the way back to November. They wiped out all of their progress that they have made through raising rates and quantitative tightening. It took them six months in one day. Now, why is this important? Because if one more circumstance like this happens to the tune from 8.34 to 8.64, that's 300, right? If I go from 8.64, where do I go? Almost to 9. One more occurrence like this, we have now wiped up all of that hard work that the Fed and Jerome Powell has done to try to reduce inflation. Which, by the way, when you zoom out on this thing and you really take a look, look at this mountain. Have we really made that much progress? That's where we were before COVID and money supply. We're still way up here. We got to here. We jumped up there. Let's take it a step further. You start to wonder, okay, what other banks could be in trouble? Well, I have some, first of all, I'm a Twitter addict. And I have some things that I've looked at on Twitter. Shout out to uh, Fuzzy Panda is his name. Look what I found. Private jets flying into Omaha, Nebraska. Does anybody have any idea who lives at headquarters in Omaha, Nebraska? If your guess was Warren Buffett, you're correct. Now, the last time we saw this happen was before the Great Financial Recession, the financial crisis, and it happened in 2007. And what we can see here, come over here real quick, is we can see these are the private jets that were landing just on March 17th, that's Friday. Five jets at 10 a.m., three jets at 2, five jets at 3.30, five jets at 5, six jets at 6.15, three jets at 7.30. These are all companies that were landing. Now, you, of course, there's no guarantee here. No, this is not, you know, there's not a concrete answer to what happened here. But why would that many companies, why would that many regional banks and frankly some major banks and some U.S. officials all go to that spot, Omaha, Nebraska, bank crisis timing, at the same time, let's take it a step further, look, look at this, I'm going to zoom out, all I'm doing is going on is Twitter, and I want to just grab really quick, look at these ticker symbols, these are all the ticker symbols of different companies, of regional banks, and larger banks, so even Ally Bank, who I've been talking about as a bank that I use, flew their jet in. Are, these, are all these banks on this list overexposed? I'm not trying to make a video saying these banks are going under, by the way. I'm simply sharing the information that I've seen. And guess what happened? Today, an article, which by the time you guys are watching this is probably not today, but here we are, Friday to the time I'm filling this, Monday. Warren Buffett in contact with Biden team on banking crisis. Interesting. Just two days after almost 20 major banks flew into Omaha, Nebraska, just a week after the second largest bank collapse in history of the United States happened with SVB. All of this stuff, guys, is just, I'm just sharing it with you because I want you to look at it with as, as technical of an eye or as skeptical of an eye as I do. But the point of understanding this is that there's certain days where you gotta look at these stats. You, gotta, you really gotta look at Look at all the hard work we've done. Zoom in. And look what's happening now. We may just have another crisis. We may not. But if we do, here's the end of the video that I want to share with you. Right now, Jerome Powell's sitting in a spot and he says, okay, I want to bring inflation down. How do I bring inflation down? I raise rates. If I raise rates, I risk another bank collapsing. If another bank collapses and it's not privately bailed out from a godsend like another bank or a Warren Buffett, etc., then the government has to bail them out. If the government bails out another bank, it erases everything. So he's like, hmm, should I raise rates? I don't know. On the flip side, he could say, well, I don't want to raise rates. I want to pause rates or reduce rates. And then inflation doesn't get better. Banks could still get hurt. And then he's still in the pickle. Guys, I don't desire to be Jerome Powell 
or sit in that situation. But I hope this is educational for you to understand what I'm looking at right now. And I haven't done a lot of videos like this really ever on the channel where I just simply just talk. There's no fancy cuts, there's no edits. There's only Warren Buffett's face popped up one time. What I want you to understand is that this is happening real time right now in the United States. This is the information that I want to get to. And if you want to see more videos just like this, where I just hop on the computer, share it, show you some things, I'll do it. I'll do it every day if you guys want me to. Click the like button though to let me know you want it and comment down below one of the biggest takeaways you have from this video. Also comment down below what you think's going on. What do you think's going to happen? Because this is all just my opinion. It's not financial advice. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys next time. Fire video. Yeah.